So GPTs are the second tool that I want to show you. And the example and um, the use case I'm going to give you with this one is around the revenue pensions manual. Now, if you're not in the world of finance, you may not be privy to the revenues pensions manual, but it is a booklet and it has huge number of pages and it sets out all the kind of legal and tax implications of all the different things that you can do with pensions in Ireland. It's a massive piece of work. You can either have it as a book or you can have one of the 18 PDFs that you can download from the revenue website. So with that in mind, Dermot and I set off to create a GPT of Right, I'm going to just give this one a refresh. So a, G, a GPT just around the revenue pension model. So if you're using ChatGPT often and you're being really good and detailed and diligent about your prompts, you might find that it's kind of taking time because you're kind of having to kind of repeat the same prompting structure. You have to keep on telling it, you know, the style you want, the kind of, you know, the, the, the creator type you want it to be. So when you get to that stage, you need to stop and say, hang on, I need to create this as a GPT. So a GPT is like a, um, a device or a, or a kind of a container that sits on top of ChatGPT, the large language model that we all know and love. The GPT is like our own trained version of data. We can upload our own files about how we do things. We can upload our own files about maybe um, specific use cases, or in the case of the revenue pension manual, we can upload the revenues, beautiful PDFs that dictate how pensions are to be governed from a tax perspective in Ireland. I never thought I'd be using those words, but I am, and I actually understand what they mean. Fantastic. So, what we can do is we upload the files and then now we can go to the Revenue Pension Manual GPT and we can ask it any question that we want. 